So, ladies and gentlemen, please take seats. Please mute your mobile phones if possible. Don't forget to send some feedback. There's a feedback form here, and the last slash is important. Uh, the next talk is going to be about Wildfly Swarm. That's Another exciting technology coming from Jabos Middleware. Uh, the presenters are Bruno, uh, Sebastian, and George. Yeah. Can you hear me? OK. If, uh, if you don't understand my French accent, you tell me. You wave or. Uh, so, first, uh, a thank you to Sebastian and George. I stole them this morning when I saw. Because uh, Swarm and, and Forge are things that are moving at a fast pace. And, uh, and we've been at doing lots of work. And, uh, and uh, George will tell you, actually, uh, the work he's been doing and actually just been merged two days ago. So it's the right time to talk about it. And it wasn't planned initially, but uh, he managed to, to get in. And same for Sebastian, who's been working uh, actively on the project. Uh, so thanks for you guys. And, uh, I think you introduced yourself this morning. So, like Sebastien, uh, I'm, uh, I used to be French, <laughs> so, I, <laughs> um, so I'm, uh, I'm living uh, abroad. I worked for Red Hat for the last uh, since 2007. I used to be a customer, and uh, now I joined the, the engineering team, and uh, I'm very happy there. And uh, we have fantastic guys, fantastic technology, and uh, fantastic projects. So it's very exciting. We have lots of passion. I don't know if you joined. Tim Burke uh, 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 presentation this morning about rock stars. And I think I can say a lot of the people in my team and people who are here that work for JBoss really fit in that profile, actually check most of the boxes. So it's great to be surrounded by, by these profiles and these people. Uh, Maybe you can talk a little bit about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for those who weren't at my talk previously. <laughs> so I'm Sebastian Long. I'm half French and half Dutch. <laughs> and I joined Red Hat three years ago. And I'm on the Red Hat mobile platform team. And uh, but today, I will talk about <laughs> Forge and Swarm because I love to talk about other technologies. And I talk about these technologies as a passionate user. So it's really cool. And George. So uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is George. I am uh, the project lead of the JBoss Forge project. And uh, I work in Red Hat since uh, for 2012. It's uh, three, four years. And uh, well, this is, this is going to be great. Yeah, so. Today, the presentation will be a mix of uh, slides and code. And also, we'll have a few little questions toward the end, but uh, I'll keep the surprise. Um, but uh, feel free to ask any. I don't know if we'll have enough time with 40 minutes, but uh, if you feel like asking a question, raise your hand. Uh, so, there's a few sessions about microservices uh, today, uh, about containers, about Evolution, but lots of things that you know moving into that direction. But for us, it's a, it's an evolution. Microservices is something that existed. Uh, if you've seen the second session this morning with Mr. Miller, uh, it started actually with microkernel in the 80s, really at the low end of the stack on the on the Linux side. Uh, and but we're looking more at the higher end of the stack today. So more at really at the the web frameworks level, at the at the application level. And uh, one of the purpose of that talk today is how we've transitioned from traditional, and we, can, we call it sometimes monolith applications, and where are we today with microservices? Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on, the, on SOA type applications, but we're focusing more on you know, uh, immutable infrastructure, uh, microservices, and containers. Okay. Uh, this morning, Sebastian presented uh, uh, author and bookstore applications. Uh, we'll use that as a traditional applications, you know, something you deploy as a single uh, artifact in an application server. 
and we'll take you through what it takes to actually to swap my app. Yeah. So we'll take we'll take you through these steps, and we also explain to you actually a little bit of the notions behind microservices, and also uh, what are the constituents behind Swarm. What what it what is Swarm exactly? Uh, a little bit of the, on the characteristics of microservices. Definitely about decoupling. Independent release cycles, what do we mean by that? Is actually uh, very often in agile groups, actually, we see more and more a fit with the microservices characteristic there because a two, team, a two pizza teams will work on maybe a, a fi an accounting service, another one will work on billing or OSS, BSS, stop, stop, uh, uh, and these things actually have a different release cycles. And very often there is actually a, a release train that's blocked because in the monolithic world because these things have to wait or there are dependencies. Uh, but microservices allow you to break that. Uh, it's not about the amount of line of code. It's more about the functionality, you know, uh, functionality that's encapsulated that do one thing and do it well. And it's something, as I mentioned before, that has been existing for a long time. I don't know if you've done some credit checking when you write applications. You know, there is Don and Bradstreet. There is a lot of credit checking uh, uh, providers. They used to do that. I remember when I was doing an e-commerce app in 2000s, uh, you could access them through XML RPC or web services already. So that's, that's a microservice. You, know, you could sell also the what-if scenario that you have running on the DLL. You can export it to Schwab and others, bro other brokers, through web protocols. So that's the notion of web services not tied to a technology, it's a, 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 to a language, but it's definitely something that is self-contained and that executes one function. It's not about the amount of code you have behind it. And scale independently, of course. Uh, so again, about size, it's uh, a lot of people say, okay, uh, it shouldn't be longer than 100 lines of code. And that's, that's, that's I'm not going to use the word, but that's a BS, <laughs> basically. <laughs> uh, so you'll see here, actually, in some of the, the, the microservices we'll be showing later, is actually very small, but doesn't, doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. Sometimes you have lots of functionality. Sometimes you bring lots of dependencies, other libraries, okay? So it doesn't mean microservice means micro size. Uh, containers are becoming very popular. We've done, and we have lots of documentation online. We have done some microservices architecture based on EAP6. So primarily deploying, using containers as a deployment mechanism to deploy those kind of capabilities. Today we'll show you actually that uh, not only you can run with uh, the de facto uh, 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 container uh, uh, solution today, a Docker, but also you can uh, run it without Docker. Swarm actually is a perfect fit for that. And uh, Swarm actually encapsulates things like, an, uh, and uh, we'll show you in the demo, capabilities that, you know, like typical, typical like SSO, IDM, it's not just providing an app. It could be back-end services, okay? So we'll take, we'll take you through that. So not everyone wants to use Node.js either, so it does, but, and the reason is lots of, there's a lot of investments in Java E, you know. Uh, so today is actually a great window of opportunities for a number of companies that want to modernize their Java E applications. So, and again, if I take the first slides, how do you, what is the journey to take your existing e-applications to actually move them to a modern infrastructure? To decom so we'll take through the notion of decompositions and also uh, run them into sing single executable jars. So that's one of the, the advantage of Wildfly Swarm here. So stripping down uh, EAP Wildfly is quite common. So very often you see applications, and I don't know, many of you probably, if you write an app, you'll probably just need JPA, JAXIS, and sometimes JSF, of course, for presentations. But uh, those, those sets of capabilities are, you know, not the entire EE stack. So you really want to, to, to have uh, the ability to run in a higher density environment, to, especially when you run on clouds, 
or you know, different environments, you, you need to actually deploy just what you need, okay? Good, so we've, we've seen actually a, a evolution around the deployment mechanism. So we want to run our application, not just as a monolith application, we want to be able to decompose them. We talk about re different release cycles. We talk also about different deployment models, sometimes uh, on Docker, maybe on OpenStack, on OpenShift. But from a developer perspective, you shouldn't be affected with that, okay? So Swarm allow you also to, to deploy artifacts in any environment you think of. You can actually deploy them, whether as a, as a WAR, you can still deploy on your Java E, co-located with other services, or you can run them separately in a Docker instance or on OpenShift or anywhere else and invoke them. Uh, so that's one of, the, uh, one of the, the constituents that we've been looking into. Uh, that's a slide that Mark Little presented in 2010. I don't know if you remember, if you look at the uh, follow-up, our uh, keynote at Red Hat Summit. And at that time, in 2010, is when we actually re-architected AS5 and AS6 to AS7. And one of the, the, the bigger uh, uh, change was around the microservice uh, modular service container, especially around the, the dependency resolution mechanism about also the modularity. So we started already to do that work, you know, with, yes? So you are saying Yes, so you can actually just have EGB as a dependency, and you just package that and run it as an executable job. So, you, you, so you're talking about the interaction. How do you do? You have inter-process communications or inter-microservices. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we are, we preserve that level of isolation. So actually, Whitefly Swarm is a subset of. Uh, we keep the Wi-Fi core and we bring those dependencies and we wire those dependencies on, on, on demand. And you'll see in the demo actually, we'll, they will actually, we call them fractions actually. So you bring those capabilities that you need. Uh, you don't need to bring, so we've done that work actually, what you just say, we actually started to have that demand. We wanted actually with the evolution of, uh, you know, we, we, we're not just deploying on servers. We're deploying on different environments. And with the cloud, with the OpenShift, we, couldn't, we had to rethink our footprint. You know? We had to change our, you know, our, the way we, we assemble all those capabilities and give choice to developers to bring what they need. Okay? So white flight swarm, we call it also just enough app server, as you mentioned. Maybe you just need, uh, I remember when, we, when I was a customer, we used to do end of day processing for all our bookings or all our trades. And for each of them, we actually had a kind of a worker farmer situation. And we will spin an instance with, uh, we just need messaging and JPA basically. So we get orders and we book them and we, we dehydrate on database. We were starting a web logic, a full web logic server every time. Here, you just, you don't need that anymore. Now we're talking about Few, few tens of megabytes versus 1.5 gigabytes every time, okay? So when you look at, especially when you do end of day processing in a trading environment, uh, it's a huge amount of, of, you know, you're churning lots of data. And when you, when you look at how many instances you want to spin, you know, it's the difference between a few megabytes and a gigabyte is, you know, you'll see it quickly. Uh, it can change from hours and, and the, the or one data center cost, you can reduce that by a fraction of you know, tenfold at least. Yeah. Uh, so we use a lot of the existing uh, uh, Wi-Fi on the AP uh, in terms of uh, uh, self-contained services without wrapping it all in Docker. Uh, we also have uh, um, 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that's uh, something we've done in 2009 with AS7, so we've re-architected to make it possible. <clears throat> as uh, Sebastian uh, mentioned this morning, we follow the principle of uh, convention over configurations. Uh, we'll see actually later how we bring those dependencies in, in pom.xml through Maven. Uh, and <clears throat> again, we, we're trying to lower the barrier of entry. So how do you want to be productive? You know, if you, if you want to create a microservices, it shouldn't be more effort. Actually, it's a very simple exercise. Uh, it's not just Java E also. So how do you cluster those services? So we bring also other works, other, other contributions from uh, Netflix OSS, so like Ribbon, uh, Istrix, and also Logstash. So how do you monitor all those services together? Um, other, other aspect where it could be uh, useful. Um, uh, building e application with limited capabilities. I gave the example where you just need M uh, messaging and JPA or JAXIS and JPA or JSF. Uh, you need also a number of uh, 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 mechanisms like class loading uh, handling. You know, like uh, we brought the notions that are close to HDI in AS7. So you know, class loading, isolation, modularity, etc. I'm not gonna go into the flat path discussion, but uh, I'll leave that for later. Uh, but basically, uh, uh, the goals are definitely around multi-tenancy and higher density and shared services. So that's one of the, the, the foundation of the work we've done. Uh, again, as a, as a representation, so Whitefly, uh, when you create your jar, you basically you bring only what you need, uh, as opposed to in a normal container, where you, if you just need jack size, you still bring a number of unused parts, even if they're not wired at runtime, because uh, uh, with uh, AS, since AS7, we do those uh, resolutions uh, at runtime, but they're still there. Uh, so by default, we provide a main, but you can override it. So I'll, I'll show you a, a simple example. And you don't have to touch the standard, standalone XML, although some people have requested it, and I think that's something we, we can do. So how does it work? So typically when you do a jack size resource, it's a very uh, uh, a simple uh, 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 construct that's in a normal E6 uh, container. That's with Whitefly Swarm. Okay, same person. So spot the difference. So here there's actually no difference. With Swarm, you actually don't change your code. As what I mentioned before, there's a, that's, we've made sure that actually the code you've already wrote, you want to decompose that application that, uh, and modernize it. You're not gonna, we don't want you to touch that code. So those, those changes will revolve mostly around Maven. So Maven will bring a new plugin, so it's just with a package, uh, um, um, uh, a goal. So you can build as, as a WAR or the JAR. We also bring the fractions. Uh, so before you add the JPA uh, uh, dependency, you just have to call Wi-Fi, bring the, the dependency or Wi-Fi swarm. So we have actually, we name them fractions, so you bring those capabilities that you add on Wi-Fi and other project like OSS, uh, Netflix OSS, uh, you bring them. You can also bring a full server, which we'll show you, actually I need to, to accelerate, but uh, uh, you can bring uh, SSO IDM server as a fraction, as a, as a capabilities, and, and Sebastian will demonstrate that. Uh, so yeah, fractions are Whitefly subsystem. Whitefly, everyone knows Whitefly. I've been talking about Whitefly, I assume everyone, so it's our app server, so uh, all these uh, subsystems are brought as fractions, so they're defined as a module for jars, uh, and uh, uh, they're defined, and they also bring uh, all the transitive dependencies, so it's much cleaner for the, for the developer. So if you, if you bring a JAXI CDI, then it'll bring, of course, JAXI, and same for, same for the rest. Uh, so that's a list of the current, and I think it's even, it's growing, so it's probably even bigger now. But uh, even 
it's not just about the, the typical E subsystem and, uh, you find in Wi-Fi, but uh, it's non-Wi-Fi also around. Just, uh, as I said before, the, the Netflix OSS contribution, but also uh, reactive Java and reactive Netty. So Netty is a project also we've been uh, uh, contributing heavily um, uh, with uh, Trustin and, and, uh, and Norman. I mentioned you can also override your main. So by default, when you build a swarm application, it will, it's a, it's, it will bootstrap through a main. 99% of the case, you, that's enough for you. But you can also override it. So bring other capabilities, maybe your own fractions. Um, that's an example. For example, uh, I think that's something you've done to secure and to protect the rest endpoint here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can talk about this one. Oh, yeah, that was just, I was showing in how in six lines of code you can deploy your mi microservice with Swarm and secure it. So basically we start a new container. Uh, we say uh, we want to, uh, to have Jux RS. We add our REST uh, class that I don't show here. And then we say we deploy it and we secure it and we protect this path uh, with the get method, you have to get the wall admin. Container start, okay. You just double click, it will deploy this microservice and it will be protected. Okay. Okay. That's just a small example. Oops. And oh, <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect timing. <laughs> it's perfect timing. Sorry, I didn't mean to. to yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Perfect timing. It was so, for me actually to stop talking. But uh, so I'm going <laughs> to hand over to. Uh, for the code, because we, we actually don't have much time, but I think the bigger value is actually when you see it in action. So I'll... Uh, yeah, I'll so, to... George, we have 18 minutes to build an <laughs> old school app. From that, we will extract microservice, we will swarmify it, and we will secure it. Okay. Do you think we can do it? Okay. <laughs> Let me grab my, my sheet sheet. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, we will be using um, Forge. Forge. And then uh, let's start by creating an, um, a bookstore app for those who were here this morning. It's a pretty simple app. You have a book, you have an author, and you have also an offer class so to provide special offers. Uh, to do that, we just run a script, a Forge script, that will just create the whole app for us because it's not really in the scope of Swarm, so but it's just to show you how nice Forge is. And by the way, at the end of the talk, we will treat a gist containing all the scripts, so tonight you can play with it. So here it's creating the app for us. Okay, here it is. Uh, classic Java EE application. We can deploy it. It has been, it's just even a UI, it has been scaffolded, so Let's deploy that to the classic way to a raw fly uh, server that is running. So it's deployed, okay, let's just take a quick look at the app. Bookstore, awesome, we got authors, books, and we create, create offers. It took you 40 minutes to do that this morning. Yeah, but <laughs> I didn't have the script <laughs> and had to explain each step. So that's it. We have our app, classic app. Uh, now is the thing. We have the offer. We want to extract that as a microservice because other applications need to consume that. And we want to be able to extract that as a microservice. Yeah. And since offer is quite simple, it's, uh, uh, maybe you can show it. We just have two, two fields, description and a name. Let's start from scratch. Let's start create a... Um, the microservice from scratch. So yeah, we're moving away from a traditional monolith app to actually start decomposing it. Yeah. yeah. So with Forge, creating a new project is easy as project new. We call it offer. Awesome. And first thing we will do is add the Swarm add-on. That will mean we're telling Forge that we want to use Swarm. So the first change that it will do is uh, change our pom.xml to add uh, the, the Swarm plugin. 
and everything, everything he will, uh, Forge will be listening to any changes that we are making to the code. And what we are going to do now is add a new entity. Yep. So, so we you create. See the, you see the added fraction automatically. Yeah. It detected actually the E APIs and created fractions for it. Okay. So let's add a new entity and we call it offer. Okay, here we go. And here you can see that um, Swarm, the Swarm Fraction JPA has been installed. So we have done nothing. Um, maybe you can show sure. the bum, just to show that the fraction has been added on the fly. So you don't have to care about that. We, the Force plugin do that for you. Um, do we have, uh, we add, need to add some fields to our offer class? So, a name and a description. Okay, there you are. Uh, now we have to generate the rest endpoint for this offer. So that's just one command. That's generate endpoint from entity, and here we point to our uh, offer class. So, and here we go. We got our JAXRS endpoint. Um, since web apps will be consuming it, uh, we have to add course support. But I'm sure Forge has something for that. Yeah? yeah? Cool. Here it is. Okay. So we can just accept the defaults, finish. So Forge will create a JAXRS filter. And we are done with our microservice, and we can build, yeah, we can run it. Build the jar first. So, here. Let's go to offer. And, uh, so this will build a jar, and we'll execute the jar, the and wildflower jar. And the Wildfly Swarm plugin yeah. has been added when you did the Wildfly yeah. setup. Okay. But at any time, if you do a Maven clean install, it will create a jar for you, but it will also uh, create a classic WAR file. So if you still want to deploy that in your Wildfly server, you can also use the WAR artifact. But here we are running the jar. It's like we could double click the jar on Windows, no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's take a look if, um, if our microservice is deployed. Yeah, there it is. It's an empty response. It's an empty response since we didn't have any um, data, data. Oh, yeah, and you, you prepared a small... Yeah, I have uh, prepared a small script. A small uh, SQL script just to create some offers so we have some content. Yeah. So this one, and uh, you just have to run it again. I, so, maybe you can show with Java jar or, or uh, okay. just to show the difference. So, here is, you can see that he's making the war file, but under the hood, he's also made the, the jar file. So, if you go in the target, we can see, if, maybe you can increase a bit the funds, control shift plus. Yeah, so we got our offer swarm jar, and we can just execute that as a as a jar. So it's just a Java jar target jar. jar. <laughs> of course, we can run many of them. We can do pass the port offset like in Wildfly. We can also run them with Netflix uh, ribbon in a clustered environment. We we don't have time to demonstrate that, yeah. but uh, so. If we refresh, we should have a list of, look, okay, yeah. that's has been injected by the SQL script. So, our microservice is running. Um, yeah. what change? Now we have to change our old app so that instead of consuming his own service, it will take the offers from the microservice. Gee, it looks hard. It's really hard. So, <laughs> 
I'm not sure we're going to do it. Okay. Um, so that's an Angular app that has been scaffolded, and here you, you could see before it was just uh, local. Yeah. Yeah calling yeah. is relative yeah. path because it was in the same war. Yeah. Now we say, okay, you have to take the offers from uh, this path, the microservice that we just deployed. Yeah. So if we, we deploy that again, though here we do an old school redeploy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and let's make sure, and if we go to the offers, here we have the offers. So we have decoupled our app. We could do the same with books, with other, with anything. We could create all mini microservices. Um, <coughs> there, it is. there it is. Wow. The XXX offer. I don't want to know what it is. <coughs> so remember someone asked you this morning if we could secure that. Can if you we do can that? secure that. Let me take, let me think. Should we do that? Yeah. Sure. And we are going to secure that on the cool way by using <laughs> Keycloak. So for those who don't... As a swarm. Uh, as a swarm. So just a few words for those who don't know what Keycloak is. Keycloak is a uh, security server, authentication server, that uh, you can delegate all your security to that. Um, deserve a whole presentation. We don't have time to talk about that. But anyway, you should check that out. <laughs> swarm has support for Keycloak in two ways. It has uh, a fraction called Keycloak server, and you just create an empty project, and you just add the Keycloak server fraction, and then it creates a jar containing a full Keycloak server. So we got one here running already, yeah. and what we are going to do is to update our microservice, so, uh, and we are going to tell them you will be secured by Keycloak. So first step is to add the fraction uh, key cloak. So we have a command. If any time you have to add a fraction manually, we have a command here. It lists all the fraction ex uh, existing uh, fractions. Here we get key cloak. We just click that. Okay. Now we have two more things, two more steps before it's totally secure. The first one, we have to provide a web.xml that contains security constraints and that's specified that the login method be, to be used will be um, Keycloak. Since we are running a bit short of time, we have that prepared for you, but as you can see, nothing really exciting. So we just copy paste that here. Maybe you can open it, it again so we can see. So basically what we say here is uh, that it's a security constraint. We say we want to protect uh, this URL and only users with the role user yeah, uh, can access it. And, uh, at the, and that's the other important part. We say um, the, authentication, the login method will be Keycloak. The second step is to provide a, file, a descriptor file, a JSON file, that tells our microservice where the Keycloak server is running, what the public key is, all kind of information. Um, again, it's not the scope of this demo, so we prepared that for you, but as you can see, nothing really exciting there, just uh, it's pointing to our Keycloak server, which is running as a Swarm, uh, swarm app, I, how we call you. And um, that's all we have to do. I think you can build the app again. Yeah, this one. server is running right here in the in this screen. Just okay. And if we go back to here and if we refresh the page and and do we have a demo <laughs> effect? Fine. <laughs> it's good we have five minutes. Should be okay. Um, where have you put the key cloak that is in? Oh, it's I okay. Think it, it's already. Oh, webin, right? Webin, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's so easy to just redeploy. Up. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay, we're almost there. And normally now if we will we will refresh the page, it will say that we are not allowed. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. Uh, not yes. right. So we got it. Our microservice is secured. You have to, you can only talk with this microservice if you are authenticated on your, um, through the Angular app. So now if we go back to the Angular app and we ask for the offers, it will probably not work. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Oh, let's, oh, but we just see it was responsive. So it's not working. If we open the console, we will see it's unauthorized. So uh, that's also out of scope of this demo. Now you have to uh, enable Keycloak on the Angular side. And uh, that's... So who could do that? Who could do that? Um, <laughs> I, I, I can propose something. I can, yeah. we will treat at the end uh, the scripts to create these apps and uh, at your session tomorrow maybe at, we can and tomorrow there's a Jables uh, Forge lab and there if someone comes there and provides us the solution to enable Keycloak <laughs> uh, integration in Angular app he will get a Raspberry <laughs> 2 a really cool one <laughs> and I swear you it's really easy if you're a bit curious if you check the documentation, the key cloak examples, you look for Angular, you should be able to do that. So if someone tomorrow comes with his laptop and says, hey, I managed to secure that, well, you will get that. Um, that's the end of the demo. I think we are still one minute or two left for any questions, two minutes left for questions. I just you, oh yeah, sure. I just summarize also. So. That's, the slides will be available, so also, in addition to the GIST, you'll have information. Uh, that's what we just did, to move from monolith to application, to a full microservice. And if you really want to go deeper dive, if you're interested to look at other fractions, like Netflix OSS projects, to have fully clustered environment, then you look at that Booker demo. So that's a really full-blown demo, uh, scalable, et cetera, okay? Uh, so as a conclusion, uh, of course, we, we go, it's a fast iteration. We had Alpha 8 today. I think it's been released uh, two days ago. Uh, you're very welcome to bring also all your ideas. Uh, you can communicate with us. Wildfly is a community, as uh, Tim Burke this morning said. It's very, the team is better than the individual, so you're welcome to to contribute through either Twitter, Wildfly Swarm, IRC, or look at the code and also share your ideas with us, okay? And if you want to participate to the, to the little uh, things we have, uh, you can look at the, the GIST, which is... Everyone can play except <laughs> Abstract J. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear me. Yeah. So here's the GIST that I put in uh, GitHub. You can the scripts that were used in this presentation. Maybe you can tweet it with the, with the DevConf uh, hashtag so people can, can find it back. If they, yeah. Out yes, of, I'll tweet it. Up. Yeah? So you will tweet it right after.
actually, your project doesn't have to be Forge enabled. Any project, any Java e project can use Wildfly Swarm. So we, we demonstrated the Forge for the amazing productivity you get out of it. And you have all the add-ons. It brings all the fractions automatically. Yeah. I'm asking whether having a Forge project would break it. Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.